Hey guys, Mike here from Fortinet Guru, uh, your favorite Fortinet YouTube channel, maybe, hopefully. Um, a few weeks ago I released a video specifically talking about HA clusters, why they're important, and how to build one. Um, but apparently I boogered it up because the encoding did not go well. The uh, quality of the video was such that you couldn't really see what was going on on the screen, so all you really got was a 30 minute video of me talking. So this is attempt number two, so that we can hopefully get this thing working a little bit better for you and provide a little bit more value. I deleted the other ones. So you don't even bother looking for it. It was a nightmare anyways. Anyways, as many of you know, I run multiple businesses. And I have people that do those businesses for me or partners or things like that. One of the businesses that I own is called Office of the CISO, which CISO is the you know, Chief Information Security Officer. That company focuses on things like virtual CISO as a service, penetration testing, vulnerability assessments, things of that nature. Uh, they also focus pretty heavily on building information security programs for organizations. Well, we're in the process of standing up our infrastructure for said business, and it's going to be an HA cluster. And I figured, you know, what better situation to make a video for than for an HA cluster that you guys can actually see and, and witness how things take place. So, so first things first, why would you actually want your FortiGates in an HA cluster? Why wouldn't you use something like HSRP or, or anything like that? And what are some of the nuances of HA clusters on FortiGates? Uh, first things first, if you run a business and you need uptime, redundancy of hardware is going to be critical. You have to make sure that your equipment stays up in the event that you suffer a hardware failure your environment does not go down, causing your customers outages. And basically, what an HA cluster does is it gives you a redundant firewall capability. That way, if the primary fails, or if a interface or something within the primary fails, your secondary can take over. Another thing that folks probably don't think about as much is it actually lightens the load on maintenance windows a little bit for you. I mean, Anytime you update a FortiGates firmware, you know it's going to be down for two to five minutes while it reboots, performs its checks, things of that nature. Having an HA cluster, the backup unit actually receives the firmware update first, goes through that whole process, comes online, synchronizes, and then once it's known good, the primary then executes the firmware upgrade. And in most situations, if you're configured properly, you only lose a packet or two here or there during that failover process, which means you can perform you know, firmware updates during a day or during production hours without it being too critical of an event. Now, obviously, you still want to announce that you know network connectivity could be degraded or something could take place because it is still a maintenance window, even though the outage isn't really witnessed by the end user. So <clears throat> those are reasons why you would want to do HA my particular HA deployment is going to be two 60Fs, which it's, it's the SOC 4 chip is so powerful that the 60F is going to probably be able to support our needs for quite a while. And then we have two 124Fs for four switches that are going to be behind the, behind the layout. So I have here the overview of how I'm going to have it cabled. So as you can see, I have two FortiGate 60Fs. I will be using their DMZ port as the HA port. And that will be done because I'm going to hang everything off the Forta switches. So a DMZ VLAN will be created. And of course, the 60F units do not have dedicated HA ports on them. So I'll take that port, I'll repurpose it as a DMZ port and then I will configure the cabling via our switches as listed. So as you know the FortiLink interface by default is an 802.3 AD aggregate interface. So I'm going to plug port 23 and port 24 in the ports A and B of the primary FortiGate. I'm going to have port 25 in the long term be my inner switch link. However for the purposes of this video we will actually be using port 20 to there, mainly because I don't have SFP optics yet, and 
for the sake of the video, it's going to serve the same purpose. And then, of course, ports A and B of the secondary Florida gate will be plugged into ports 23 and 24 of the other switch. Now, this provides us with redundancy and aggregate throughput capabilities because you'll be able to get the, the two gigs of aggregate bandwidth between the uh, Florida gate. I will not be utilizing split Florida link interfaces because I am not connecting the same Florida gate to multiple switches. And then if I were to lose ports 23 and 24 of switch one, or etc., I will have the ability of failing over to the backup unit. Very straightforward cabling, very straightforward deployment. And for some of the, and for those of you that ask why not run an active active cluster, um, I personally think that running active active clusters on Florida gates tips the engineer into doing something they probably shouldn't. Uh, I mean, as we all know, budgets get cut, or we're constantly, from a security perspective, being asked to do more with less, which is usually funding, unfortunately. Um, and when you do active-active, you end up in a situation where you're more likely to over-provision your environment. Now, in the grand scheme of things, if something were to fail, you being up because the primary unit failed or the secondary unit failed in an active active cluster it'll just run slower but I like for my failover situation to still be able to support 100% of my traffic without the users noticing active passive does a very good job of that and that's just where I like to hang out so I have if you see over here these are the actual two Florida gates right there and then the two switches beneath them switches are not cabled yet um, we're gonna do the actual active passive cluster build and then once they come back online we will do the cabling of the switches in the base configuration so these guys have been factory reset because obviously I've done this video once already and it doesn't do you a lick of good if there's stuff already in there we want to make sure that you see it top to bottom start to finish you go ahead and go to the process of doing the password Okay, so the force. Alrighty, so the first Florida gate that we are going to configure currently has an internal. Currently has an IP of ten dot one hundred dot one hundred dot one twenty five, and this is actually going to be my secondary unit. And the only reason why this one's going to be named secondary is because it's it's already named within the support portal for my assets and I'm a little OCD when it comes to that. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna set my time. I am in the central time zone. And this is actually gonna be my secondary unit. I'm good to go there, apply. Come to, uh, I like to set my host name, that way I can know which device is which. <clears throat> I set my time zone so it makes sense. And we're gonna do an active passive cluster. Now this is located, I'm doing this within 40 OS 7.0, specifically 7.0.2, and then I'll, I'll end up updating it to 7.0.3 as that just recently came out. And the purpose of doing this in 7.0, when I don't normally recommend folks going to major releases before .4 is out, um, I'm the client in this situation. If I get burned by my own stupidity, it is what it is. Uh, if a client gets burned by my stupidity, that looks bad. So, and for what the way this device is going to be configured, 7.0 is actually pretty stable. So, so OSISO, we want to do session pickup. Set my little password here. And our heartbeat interface is going to be our DMZ which you can see it already has the uh, alias. I did a factory reset two on this so it doesn't change the interface names. And then do okay. Now I'm gonna come over to the other one. I'm gonna log in it. Later. <clears throat> 
go to system settings set my uh, my name set my time zone and your naming convention can be whatever you want it to be um, it's it's strictly based on on your use cases and what you need now we're going to go over here to HA we're going to go active passive and I'm going to set the priority on this one to a higher number that way it's the actual primary um, the higher the priority when it comes to HA settings uh, the pref more preferred that device is and I did OSISO-HA on this one I think I did. I think I did. We'll find out real quick. Said that we're seeing them groovy. Now, as you can see, once the HA cluster was built, I actually lost access to the Forty Gates. Why is that? Well, that's because Fortinet does HA on their Forty Gate devices at layer two, which means it does it by MAC address. So on typical environments where you have a Cisco device or, or various other vendors, you end up in situations where device one will own an IP address, usually dot two, device two will own an IP address, dot three, and then they'll share the dot one address between them, a floating IP, if you will. The way Fortinet does it is it's at a layer two deployment. So FortiGate 1 has its physical MAC address, FortiGate 2 has its physical MAC address, and then they do virtual MACs for the interfaces that are assigned to them. So we lost access to our FortiGates because they created a virtual MAC, which then pulled an IP from the DHCP server, making their other IPs no longer useful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to log into my home unit, find out what IP they pulled, and then we'll jump back in there and look at them. They pulled 104. So I update it to the new IP. We can log in, check the status, make sure all is jiving. And as you can see, both devices are on. They're doing their thing. Go to system HA. Not quite synchronized yet. Usually takes a little bit of time, but we can go in and manage the subsidiary unit. I can't talk for anything. I want to check that HA group to make sure I didn't booger that up. And no, I named it HA. Okay, cool. That's another thing. If you ever need to manage one of your FortiGates that's within your HA cluster directly, especially if you're doing things like troubleshooting, check some issues or anything like that, you just do exec HA manage. And if you do a question mark, it'll tell you the, uh, the secondary, tertiary, etc. units. And you do that and you type the username you want to log in as and it'll prompt you for your password. So these guys are in the process of synchronizing. While they're doing that, we're going to take a look at our interfaces. The internal um, VLAN switch, ports 1 through 5, they're set to default, 192.168.1.99. We are not going to use these interfaces in any way, shape, form, or fashion because we're going to have four switches hanging off of them. It just, you know, it's easy peasy. Don't need it. So, you remember how I said I was going to cable it? I'm going to not have Fortilink split interface because I don't need it for this particular deployment. And uh, 
we're just going to use these default A's and B's. So I'm going to go and cable these guys up real quick, and then you will see them uh, come online. So just give me one second. Now that they're all cabled up, I'll do a refresh. We'll actually see them start coming online. And in case you couldn't hear me during the actual connection stage, port 23 of switch 1 is going to port A of FortiGate 1. Port 24 of switch 1 is going to port B of FortiGate 1. Port 22 of each switch is going to one another. That's their inner switch link. In the future, that will be uh, port 25. And then, of course, 23 and 24 of secondary switch is going to ports A and B of the secondary FortiGate. Now these guys should be coming online. They're already online. You can see they're already running 7.0 and if we look at their topology, they show us a stack. Very, very simple, very, very straightforward. I have these guys cabled the way they are because I'm not using any level of MC lag. Um, this is a smaller environment that's not going to push a lot of bandwidth. Um, so we don't have to worry about a whole lot of that. It's mostly documentation and various scans. So, so we have our switches. They're connected. They're jiving. And then, of course, you come over here. You can see that they're looking pretty good in the fabric itself as well. If we look at our security fabric, our physical topology. Fortinet security fabric is pretty nice, especially if you do a lot of automation and stitches and things like that with other, other Fortinet gear. Um, but So we have a general management interface that I've created. This is going to be the VLAN that everything defaults to, all internal stuff. And then we will create VLANs for our customers. So all we really have to do is plug all these guys into our management because that's going to be our default. We're not going to use the default VLAN. Um, I actually don't recommend using default anything. If you can avoid, if you can, if you can avoid it, you might as well just build your own default. That way, you make sure you're following your platform. And of course, that VLAN is going to be VLAN 100. And for the sake of this, it's going to be you know 10.100.250. The only thing that I really have to configure at this point is my WAN information. Now, obviously, I cannot do that as it currently sits because I don't have the static IP information for the device yet. It just it is what it is. Um, until I get the circuit in line with where it's going, um, this is pretty much the just the best I get. So, so what I do need to do is create my zones because as you guys know, I love zones. Make sure I don't have anything there. And then we'll do basic um, setup. Our outside is gonna be WAN one and WAN two. First, I need to find out what's actually referencing WAN 1. Uh oh. So I got that. I'm going to have an inside zone. That's where my management lives. Um, go from there easy peasy do our basic policy I'm going to do a single policy for inside the out mainly because this is just so we could stand up our hypervisor and get updates and things like that going once we're up and running we will be on our way we will no longer have to worry about that so and then of course let me Create my central net, saying if it's coming from the inside and it's going to the outside. For any address, to any address, use that. 
Easy peasy. And to tell you the truth, guys, that's pretty much it. So basically, in 15 or 20 minutes, we build an HA cluster. We got some switches on them, and I configured their ports from a management network. Um, this particular firewall cluster is going to use central source NAT and destination NAT. So we'll have a little bit more granularity there. This environment will end up using BGP in the long term with multiple carriers. And that's pretty much how you do it, guys. It's very straightforward. A lot of people look at it like a unicorn or, or some big heavy hurdle that is going to cause them a lot of heartache. And that's just simply not the case. Um, the pros, you get hardware redundancy. You get failover. You get the ability to do firmware updates at a time other than 2 a.m. And then the cons, both devices have to be licensed the same. You have to buy both devices, so there is more upfront cost and there's more recurring cost. But the peace of mind that you get, knowing that if you lose a WAN port on a FortiGate, or a FortiGate burns up or anything like that, I think it's really worth it. Especially if you're running a business where clients rely on you. So, but that's the gist of it. If you guys have questions, please do me a favor, post them below. Uh, Questions, concerns, remarks, anything like that. I love reading the comments. It helps me build the channel and get it more specific. If this is your first time stumbling across my channel, please do me a favor. Hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the notify bell. Notify bell lets you know when new videos come out. Subscribe button just lets you you know, stay in tune with, with me and mine. And then, of course, the like button helps the algorithm or whatever for more people to find the video. Uh, so hopefully that answers most of your questions when it comes to HA clusters, especially active-passive ones. We might have a lab where we do an active-active one, um, but those are more so for like an Azure. If I'm deploying it, those are usually in Azure. So, But until next time, you guys have a wonderful holiday season, and uh, keep churning on that Fortinet fabric. Thanks.